Hi LEGO fans, it's Thursday the 10th of December and we're into double digit doors. This is where things get serious in the contest for Advent Calendar of the year 2020. Every day until Christmas Eve, I'll be opening up every door on every LEGO Advent Calendar, including LEGO Friends, LEGO City, LEGO Star Wars and LEGO Harry Potter. Yesterday's gifts for the most part were pretty poor. LEGO City looked out for a second day coming last and earning one point for this pair of grotty gifts. The magic disappeared from the Wizarding World as Harry Potter came third earning two house points for this far from magical table and bottle. LEGO Friends continued a positive streak earning second place and three points for this rather nice pastel coloured RC spaceship. But light years ahead of the rest was LEGO Star Wars with this Rey Skywalker minifigure. Rey earned gift of the day and four points for LEGO Star Wars. So after 9 days and 36 gifts, LEGO City is in last place with 16 points. LEGO Friends is gaining ground in 3rd place with 19 points. LEGO Harry Potter is being dragged down by Devil's Snare putting them in 2nd place with 26 points. And LEGO Star Wars continues to occupy a galaxy far far ahead of the other calendars with 29 points. Of course that could all change today as we move into double digits and open up every door number 10 on every 2020 LEGO Advent Calendar. Kicking us off today we have the LEGO Star Wars Calendar and we are in double digits already. We're looking for door number 10 which is up here and let's see what we've got. Oh it is, it's a guy I punched out yesterday. It's a Dio but Dio with a Santa hat. That is really nice. Proving you can make just about anything festive by adding a Santa hat. From LEGO Star Wars we have this festive doll. The Santa hat is the same one they use every year within the LEGO Advent Calendars. It even has the dodgy paint job. Of course adding a great big Santa hat to a gyroscopically controlled droid does have its consequences. I know what we'll do said the LEGO Star Wars designer. We'll have Dio trundling through the snow and just whack him on a round piece. Conehead is really nicely printed and resembles a hairdryer. As you can see we've got the three slots on top for the optical sensors. Dio trundles around on one big wheel which is represented here by printing on the side of the body. There's actually a much bigger version of Dio which is pretty cool. It also includes another one of these figures without the hat. Technically this SW1118 Dio with Santa hat is an exclusive. But clearly it's just the other Dio with a Santa hat added. It's a small but perfectly sculpted gift and a great start to the day. Next we have the LEGO City Advent Calendar and we are of course into double digits so let's crack open door number 10 and we got a minifigure so uh, yeah this is a cop of some description of course we do have the details on the end here that is going to be Freya McLeod actually a really good looking minifigure there uh, so let's get her put together and take a closer detailed look. <laughs> So after a very strong start from LEGO Star Wars, the LEGO City team said hold my beer and came up with a minifigure. This is Fire Chief Freya McLeod, the brilliant quick thinking head of LEGO City's fire department. Freya also appears in the 60231 Fire Chief response truck so she is not an exclusive. Starting at the bottom we have standard black minifigure legs so nothing exciting here. She does however have a really nice one by one printed badge showing that she's the boss. Also nicely printed is the torso which includes metallic gold and metallic silver. Freya wears a utility belt complete with loads of pouches and she also wears a dark red zippered jacket and a polo shirt complete with decorations on the collar. Around the back is another pouch for firefighter stuff and printed on the back we have the LEGO City Fire Department logo. The thing I really like about this minifigure is the hair with the high ponytail. It's a gorgeous red colour and I love the metallic gold hairband. The facial expression is absolutely great, I love the green glasses, the freckles and that beaming smile. There is however a very slight misprint with the white and the black. The alternate expression is much more serious and she looks like she's trying to solve some kind of problem. Freya is a really nice minifigure and in general from LEGO City this year the minifigures have been very good. Is she good enough to beat Dio? We'll find out in a few minutes. The third calendar for today is LEGO Harry Potter and can you believe we're into double digits already? And we've got door number 10 here and it's a minifigure. It's always a good day when we get a minifigure and he looks like his great aunt Tessie. This is Ronald Weasley, Ronald Billius Weasley and what a nice figure. I think we've actually had this one before but hey I'll take another. <laughs> So 
So today is turning out to be a good day, and Harry Potter doesn't disappoint with another minifigure. This is Ronald Billius Weasley, dressed for the Yule Ball in traditional dress robes which were fashionable in about 1890. The HB185 Ron Weasley also appears in the 75948 Hogwarts Clock Tower, so he is not exclusive. He looks like his great aunt Tessie, and I can confirm that he smells like his great aunt Tessie. Like all of the Harry Potter minifigures, Ron is equipped with a wand which is thankfully no longer held together with tape. In keeping with Ron's age during the Yule Ball movie, we have these medium length poseable legs. The torso print is very nicely done and shows off the traditional dress robes. As you can see, we have a very embarrassing frilly shirt and lapels. Harry, in contrast, had very sharp, stylish new robes. More printing around the back reveals lacy frills and the pattern of the fabric. It's a very subtle pattern being brown on brown, but it's definitely there. For some reason in the Goblet of Fire, Ron and Harry both grew their hair. This captures that shoulder length Weasley hair perfectly. The facial expression is great and captures a rather sheepish looking Rupert Grint. The alternate expression is probably the face that he pulled when opening up the package that contained the dress robes. Comparing the minifigure to the movie, Lego has done quite a good job with the printing here. The only real disappointment is that we have those plain legs with no overprinting for the long robes. It's a really nice minifigure, but there are going to be no bonus points for being an exclusive here. We'll find out how Ron does against Freya and Doe later in the video. Finally on this thrilling Thursday, we have the LEGO Friends Advent Calendar, and of course yesterday we got some kind of remote control plane, so let's see what lies behind door number 10. We have now, actually, that's quite nice. Uh, I guess we have some kind of um, bake stall or something like that. Maybe something to do with the kitchen. But I do like these trans pink or purple-ish elements. And also those printed cookies. Those are very nice. On a day when City, Star Wars and Harry Potter came out with minifigures, LEGO Friends has taken this in a very different direction. They're trying to bribe me with baked goods. Their bake sale does include some rather tasty looking treats. We've got a jammy dodger, a chocolate chip cookie and some kind of plain biscuit or cookie. Also available in the bake sale we have a frosted muffin and another one of those plain biscuits. I do like the way these delicious sugary confections are being displayed on an angled board. But my favourite part about this build is the actual table. It's constructed from trans pink and light blue elements. This gift has a lot going for it. I like the colours, I like the elements that have been used, and I like the fact that I'm being bribed with sugar. Will that bribe be strong enough to keep LEGO Friends in play today? Let's find out! So day number 10 was a very good day for gifts with no less than three figs. We got Dio complete with his Santa hat from LEGO Star Wars, Fire Chief Freya McLeod from LEGO City, Ronald Weasley in his fashionable dress robes from LEGO Harry Potter, and a rather unfortunately timed bake stand from LEGO Friends. But which one of these gifts deserves to be immortalised as a balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and which one deserves the humiliation of being picked last for the team? I have 10 points to award and very strong opinions. LEGO Friends returned to form and came in last earning one point for this bake stall. It's a real shame, as on any other day, this nice little decorative gift would have done well. In third place, and starting to look more like a squib each day, is LEGO Harry Potter. They take home two points for the Ron Weasley minifigure. Coming in second, I'm so 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 sorry Dio, but you can't just stick a Santa hat on a droid and call it an exclusive. Doe takes home three points for LEGO Star Wars. That means a rare win, and four points goes to LEGO City for this rather nice Freya McLeod minifigure. But do you agree with today's scores? Did the LEGO friends hit the sweet spot with their bake sale and deserve to receive a less half-baked score? Or does my fired up appreciation for Fire Chief Freya need cooling down to a more reasonable level? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you're lucky I'll feature your comments in tomorrow's video. Looking back on yesterday's comments, there was a lot of discussion about the table we got from LEGO Harry Potter. A few people, including Brick Brothers 728, Jill Aishan, God, and The Star 27, pointed out that you can put the gramophone on the table. Here's how it looks, and it looks great, but I do judge these gifts separately. Colton the Gamer also reached out from 1897, confirming that one should place one's phonograph on the table. Even more people pointed out that the bottle was designed for pumpkin juice and not bung barrel spiced mead. I suppose the orange cap was a dead giveaway. The Brilliant Brick, Mark, Brax and Scraggy Ann all noticed that the 1x1 stud on the Friends remote control was grey instead of purple. 
I did notice this during the edit stage and it was too late to change everything. All the blame goes to my daughter. Just look at those tiny incompetent hands. For her crimes, I've sent her off to the Kessel Spice Mines. The Lego builder, Hunter, Larigo and Vijan Rama all noticed that Ray had the wrong coloured lightsaber. Yes, you are absolutely right and she'll henceforth be official Star Wars geeks. Nancy K. Horton and a few other people noticed I have problems finding the advent calendar doors when they're all in the same place each day. There is a good reason for that, but I can't tell you as it would spoil the magic. Finally, Mason Shatney asked about all the fluff and hair you see on some of the gifts. It really annoys me too when I watch it back in 4K. I have a rug in the studio which sheds fibres and I was keeping the gifts in a tray on the floor. You should hopefully see less fluff in future videos. So after today's scores, do we have any changes in the leaderboard? LEGO City remains in last place purgatory with just 20 points. However, they are joined by LEGO Friends, so we have a tie in the race to the bottom. Harry Potter is 8 points ahead of the Muggle Calendars in 2nd place. And in 1st place yet again with 32 points is the unstoppable LEGO Star Wars. With 14 more days to go, Friends, City and Harry Potter need to bring their A-game to the party. Like he who must not be named, I shall return and I hope to see you on festive Friday for day 11 of my LEGO Advent Calendar door opening spectacular. Thanks for checking in, stay safe and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning.